on December 31st, 1967, the 13 and 1 Oakland Raiders easily defeated the 9 4 and 1 Houston Oilers in bone crushing fashion by a score of 40 to 7. On the same day, the 9 4 and 1 Green Bay Packers were able to freeze the 9 and 5 Dallas Cowboys in perhaps the most discussed American football game of all time the Ice Bowl. The temperature at kickoff was negative 9 degrees, and by late in the fourth quarter, it had plummeted to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The wind chill factor made the air temperature absolutely inconceivable. In the single coldest game in NFL history, Lambeau Field's turf heaters malfunctioned, leading to sheets of ice forming on the field of play. Down 17-14, the Packers drove the icy field, and on third down from the Cowboy one-yard line, quarterback Bart Starr snuck into the end zone with seconds left in the game, capping off a Packer win and one of the most dramatic finishes ever. The victors would play in the second annual AFL-NFL World Championship game, what would come to be known as Super Bowl II. Super Bowl II, played January 14th, 1968. The time, 3.05 Eastern. Location, the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. This week, the temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, would not have an impact on the football game. With a partly cloudy sky and 75,546 in attendance, the game pitted the Packers, the champions of the NFL, and the then-still-believed Superior League, a 14-point favorite against the AFL champs, the Raiders. The game was broadcast solely by CBS, charging $54,000 for a 30-second commercial. The Green Bay Packers, winners of three straight NFL championship games, found themselves in familiar territory, reaching the world championship game for the second year in a row, led by quarterback Bart Starr and head coach Vince Lombardi, widely considered to be recognized as one of the single greatest coaches of all time. The Oakland Raiders, led by former player John Rauch, a head coach, and reigning AFL most valuable player Daryl LaMonica, who threw for over 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns during the regular season. A combination of both leagues officiated the contest, but was led by AFL head referee Jack Best. There was a lot at stake. The Packers were an aging group who had underachieved during the regular season and barely survived the ice bowl. Rumors had run rampant that this may be Coach Lombardi's final game. And on the other side was an ultra-successful 13-1 Raiders of the AFL and star quarterback who were hungry for a first-ever world championship. The Raiders' offense took the field first. LaMonica gave the ball off, and Packers linebacker Ray Nitschke burst through the gap, making a terrific tackle for a solid loss on the first play from scrimmage. Nitschke continued to make tremendous plays throughout the afternoon. In what would become his final game, place kicker Don Chandler opened the scoring kicking his first of four field goals and three extra points in the process, and out kicking Oakland's George Blanda. Boyd Dolder scored a 62-yard receiving touchdown that slightly resembled one of Max McGee's scores from a year earlier. Last year's hero, McGee, had replaced Doyler. In an ironic twist, Doyler scores the touchdown he could have from a year ago as McGee played in his final professional football game, finishing with one reception for 35 yards. In a 9.2 score game, the Raiders played tough and hung in the contest. At the half, it was the Packers 16, the Raiders 7. In a famous quote, the Packers guard and future Hall of Famer Jerry Kramer said to his teammates, let's play the last 30 minutes for the old man, referring to his head coach. Perhaps a rhetorical statement, as if Vince Lombardi's players wouldn't die for him on the field of battle. Halftime entertainment included, for the second year in a row, the Grambling State University Marching Band. The Green Bay Packers enforced their dominance further in the second half, continuing to rush behind future Hall of Fame offensive lineman Jerry Kramer and Forrest Gregg. Ben Wilson's 17 carries for 62 yards led the way. Not far behind was Donnie Anderson's 14 rushes for 48 yards and a touchdown. Bart Starr even scampered for 14 of his own. The Oakland Raiders quarterback, Daryl LaMonica, struggled, completing well less than 50% of his passes, going 15 of 34 for 208 yards and two touchdown passes, and one devastating interception that put the game out of reach. LaMonica zipped a pass up the right side of the field intended for Fred Blitnikoff, but only found future Hall of Fame defensive back Herb Adderley, who intercepted the ball and returned it all the way for a Packer touchdown. 
despite the Raiders adding a touchdown to the score sheet, and despite future Hall of Fame quarterback and game MVP Bart Starr leaving the contest with an injury to his throwing hands thumb, the NFL's Green Bay Packers defeated the AFL's Oakland Raiders handily with a final score of 33 to 14. Vince Lombardi, in what was in fact his final coached game, retiring just three weeks later, won his ninth straight playoff game, which culminated in his second straight AFL-NFL World Championship victory, retroactively named Super Bowl II. In some of the most iconic images in all of Super Bowl history, the Green Bay Packers carried their legendary coach off the field for the final time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe below and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new Super Bowl videos come out. Thanks a lot.